Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Nolan Schillerstrom. I was, as RJ said, uh, the Rogers Fellow in Environmental Studies. Um, and I had the pleasure to spend my summer at a National Audubon Society in South Carolina. Um, so this National Audubon Society Center was in Bidler Forest, uh, a part of Four Holes Swamp in Harleyville, South Carolina. Uh, very small town, uh, but the, it served as a visitor center and home base for bird conservation, for education, um, and for land management here. And uh, it's about a, a mile long dirt path to get to the visitor center, but once you're there, there's this beautiful visitor center and you walk right through and out the back and there's about a 1.75, I believe, mile boardwalk that loops around in a natural old growth swamp um, th out, out the back of their, this property. Uh, my time there was spent studying the prothonotary warbler. This was my study species. Uh, it, it's a sassy little warbler that's very <laughs> territorial uh, in the swampland. They like to nest over water in natural cavities, uh, so the swamp is perfect for them. Um, and I worked banding them and monitoring them the whole summer. Uh, the project's official name was called Project Protho. Um, and my part in this had a couple different aspects to it. I uh, helped with population surveys, like I mentioned, helped uh, coordinate citizen science projects, uh, helped with some nest boxes, which I'll explain later, and I helped with their education there with some summer camps for kids and then uh, presentations for people going through the, the boardwalk in the swamp. The population surveys uh, were a lot of fun for me. That was probably the, the part that I spent the most time on. Uh, one was to help out uh, Leslie Bullock in, at Virginia Commonwealth University, she was partnering with us to do a study on prothonotary warblers. So I spent time at our canoe trail, uh, which I navigated via kayak, and on our boardwalk monitoring, uh, doing something similar to point counts, we call density estimate surveys. Um, but I, I included this picture up to the top right because of the, the way that the land, land management worked there. They, <laughs> I had to go through a road with four different gates with this same sign on there, so you could tell there was a little bit of interesting tension there between us and getting to the canoe trail. Um, but uh, the relationships between Audubon and the society were very important. Um, my daily monitoring, this is all I had to bring with me. Uh, my binoculars, my notebook, um, and then my bird identification guide to uh, if I saw a bird that I didn't know yet, uh, then I could look through the book and figure out what it was. But I took notes on when I saw the prothonotary warbler and then I could help with our banding, uh, banding efforts. So once I identified a spot on the boardwalk where a bird had not been banded yet, an unbanded bird, then we would set up a mist net. And what a mist net is, it's, it's uh, a net between two different poles. You can see one here and then there's the other is propped up on there on the boardwalk. Um, and the point is that the bird can't see it. So we put in a decoy for these territorial birds to think that there's another male on their territory and then they'll, they'll zoom in to, um, and get caught in the net. But to attract them even further, we play their, we play their bird song. Um, and I thought I'd just share that with you a little bit. So we always said that they were saying sweet, 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 sweet. <laughs> Um, and you can actually identify um, most birds, especially wood warblers, uh, w by their song. And so when we heard that song, we were like, we, get, we got to put it in the net right here. And it was, it was an exciting, sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes two minutes uh, to set up the net. And then we, when we captured them, we'd get them out of the net, take some measurements on their wings um, and, then, and some other things and put on a couple different color bands. So this is how we identified them as individuals and how I was able to map their territories. So, the way that you read this when you see them with your binoculars out in the wild was to um, read it in kind of a backwards U. So the black and white band stands for nine, uh, the silver one is A, the green is uh, one, and the yellow one is two, so this bird is A912. Um, so when I saw them again on the boardwalk, I was able to write down A912 was at this spot on the boardwalk, and then I could create a territory map. Uh, the next part of that project was uh, to <coughs> attract the crazy birders to, to the visitor center and they could help out with the citizen science aspect of this. Um, and they could, if they saw the bird and they were able to identify it um, with, uh, without doubt that it was A912 or A914, whatever bird it was, then we could use those data points as well. 
The next part of the project that I worked on was creating nest boxes to help this population out and to create a good basis for a graduate project later on. Um, it could be me, who knows? Uh, so I uh, designed and constructed these boxes with a design that we found previously, but was able to uh, to work on that, and that, that was I got to practice my spray painting skills uh, with the camouflage on these nest boxes as well. <laughs> Uh, and then the last part of this was the education. I was able to help out with a couple different summer camps, teaching about the swamp and how we learn about the swamp and, um, and share that information with others. And so being a wildlife educator uh, is something that I can definitely see myself doing in the future. And I, it definitely started here. Um, some accomplishments, uh, we, at, we banded 12 new prothonotary warblers on the boardwalk and that led to two from two previous years and so that's 14 total birds that I was able to monitor on the boardwalk. Um, and then designed and constructed 20 boxes and was able to install six before my time was up there at, um, at Francis Bidler Forest. And behind the words here you can see the territory map that I was able to create on a program called ArcGIS, it's a, the online version. And so the red is the boardwalk and all of those polygons, the different colors, those are different uh, different territories of each individual bird. And so what did I learn? Uh, probably the most important thing, my, my faculty advisor Ron Dennison told me this a few weeks ago that one of the most important things that you learn as you're an undergraduate in, uh, in the natural sciences is our field techniques and how to actually go out and survey different species or whatever your, your subject may be. So I learned a lot of those with the point counts and with color band recognition. Um, learning how to be a wildlife educator, learning how to ID birds by sound is a skill that I never thought was even possible to do until this fellowship. Um, and I learned about all the hard work that goes into conservation work. Uh, there's a lot of really great people at Francis Bidler Forest at this Audubon Center that, um, that showed me how to work, how to work really hard in their, in their field. Um, it was very inspiring for me. But I was also able to network with South Carolina biologists, with the, the Department of Natural Resources, other Audubon Centers, um, and then how to work and live by myself for long periods of time. Uh, very important in the field of field biology. But most importantly, I learned how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed pasta, as you can see on my... <laughs> um, but this fellowship, I think, will lead me to a solid career in ornithology. The National Audubon Society is a very well-known name, and I think that will, will jumpstart me into a future uh, studying birds and right now I'm actually applying to graduate schools and looking for field positions in ornithology to study birds get a bird banding license um, and this fellowship was the start um, and one more thing I working really closely with one bird species uh, the prothonotary warbler it really helped me to imagine what creating a study would be like uh, as a graduate student or as a researcher on my own and I'd like to thank a lot of people, my, my donor, uh, John Mark Dean, and the Rogers family. Uh, my site supervisors were Matt, uh, Matt Johnson and Mike Dawson, uh, all the Cornell professors that helped me out, um, Ron Denniston especially, and then Noel Ingram, she, she's just a really good friend of the National Audubon Society down there, and she let me stay in her house for free this summer. Um, and then all the Bidler Forest staff. Uh, but I, I, most importantly, I think I'd like to thank my site supervisor, Matt Johnson, uh, he let me work uh, really closely with him during the, my 10-week fellowship, and I was really appreciative, appreciative of all of the work he, uh, he helped me do, and we got to work together. It was a really great experience. Thank you.